Hi everyone. In this section, we will talk about multi-dimensional arrays. Okay. So we have already seen what is a linear array or a one-dimensional array. But now we are going to talk about what is a multi-dimensional array. Okay. So a one-D array is something that we have seen. It looks like this one. And a multi-dimensional array that means it has more than one dimension. So it can be a two-D array. It can be a three-D array. It can be a four-D array. It could could also be a n-dimensional array okay so beyond 3d arrays we cannot visualize how the array would look like but you can assume that the data exists in n dimensions okay that's uh, something that actually exists in the memory and we do also have some applications of nd arrays uh, especially when we talk about machine learning and deep learning okay so if you go into those subjects and you will find that the data is often represented as these n-dimensional arrays. So I will give you a few examples uh, in real life where these arrays can be useful. So 1D array we have already seen. Um, maybe you want to store the marks of n number of students. Then maybe you can make a n-dimensional array. Okay, so you can have a sorry 1D array. Let's say you have a 1D array. But suppose uh, let's say you want to store the marks. Okay, maybe uh, there are 10 students, so you create a marks array for 10 number of students but now suppose the marks are there but they are in three subjects okay so let's say there are three subjects and for each subject you want to store the marks of the student so maybe what you can do is you can actually make a 2d array which has n number of rows and it has three columns okay the first column let's say denotes the marks for physics next for chemistry and the third for mathematics so maybe you can say I have a student S1 who stored uh, 10, 15 and 18 marks. I have a student S2 who stored 11, 13 and 12, 22 marks and so on. Okay. So basically I can say, okay, if I want to get the marks of ith student, so I can say I will pick the ith row and that will represent all the marks of the ith student. So if I want to get the marks for physics, I can simply write it would be nothing but SI of 0. If I want to get the marks for chemistry, I can say SI of 1. Okay. And otherwise for maths, it would be S of I of 2. Okay. So we can use the square bracket notation to find out the particular row and a particular column. For example, let's say this is row X and column Y. So the marks would be available at S of x comma y okay so this is how uh, you can say a data can be represented in the form of a 2d matrix now let us also uh, talk about 3d matrix okay so where we can see a 3d matrix so a very re real life use case would be images okay so all the images that you see on your computer on your device on your mobile phone those images are nothing but those are metrics of pixels. So if you zoom into an image, you will find that the image is nothing but it's a grid. Okay. So a image is nothing but a grid. So if it is a black and white image, then it is a 2D matrix. But if it is a colored image, it is actually a 3D matrix. Okay. So I will tell you why it is a 3D matrix. Let's say you have an image in which uh, the first uh, pixel is let's say white let's say this this color is white so white is represented using rgb colors okay so there are there are uh, for each pixel okay let me let me try try to show you how each pixel is stored so each pixel has three components one a component of red another a component of blue and another a component of green okay so it would have a red value it would have a green value it would have a blue value so when you mix these values together you see a color okay for example the black pixel is represented as 0 0 0 okay similarly the white pixel is represented as 255 255 255 okay and maybe a gray pixel would have something like 100 100 100 okay similarly a red pixel would have uh, so the, the first number represents the component of red, second represents blue and the third represents uh, blue. Okay, so, so red, green and blue. So maybe if I want to have a deep red pixel, then it would be 
the maximum value that uh, a shade can take it is 255 so for red red would be full green would be zero and blue would be also zero okay so these numbers can be stored in in a 3d matrix and when you store images okay so let's say you have an image which takes four megabytes of memory then how is this size calculated so this is calculated by finding the number of rows into the number of columns into three okay because you're storing these many integers rows into columns into three into the size taken by each integer let's say each integer is a 8-bit integer let's say it's a 8-bit integer okay why 8-bit integer because the maximum value is 255 and we can represent this data using 8 bits okay because 2 raised to the power 8 is 256 so we just need 8 bits to represent one integer so effectively we would end up getting these many bits and you can convert this into megabytes or kilobytes and you would often see that an image which has a higher resolution okay so higher res resolution image basically means you have more number of rows and more number of columns okay so basically let's say a 4k image would occupy four times more space on your sd card or on your drive okay because the number of pixels have also increased by uh, that particular factor okay so maybe uh, if the both rows and columns are increased by four times then it would occupy 16 times more space on your sd card okay so basically this is uh, something that you can see that these data structures are actually related with our day-to-day -day life and when you will go into machine learning you will also come across uh, 4d data so if i give you one example of 4d data i gave you one example of image for example you have a sequence of images okay maybe a sequence of images is nothing but a video so basically you're getting one image per second let's say okay so what is going to happen each image is a 3d image and we are adding another dimension that there are multiple such images behind this we have another image then another image so basically we have added one more dimension the dimension of time okay or the number of frames so if you want to store a video so a video would be nothing but a kind of a 4d matrix you can say okay so yeah so that's a bit little bit about uh, multi-dimensional arrays and in the next lecture we will discuss uh, the details how do we create a multi-dimensional array how do we take input output and how they are stored in memory that's all see you in the next lecture